the Archimedes was, a, um, I think, the first 32-bit home computer. Um, it was amazing. Going from an 8-bit eight, eight pro programming to a 32-bit machine was absolute heaven. <laughs> from a, you, know, you could do so much more with it. It was so much easier to program. And you didn't have to spend your entire life working around difficult performance bottlenecks, memory, um, to, to, comp to give it in comparison. One of the first prototype machines, once it became a separate machine, had four megabytes of memory. Now, that sounds nothing now, but that felt like whoever will ever feel, you know, use that productively. Um, pretty quickly, I realized that actually you do need quite a lot of memory. But um, even for, for doing things like, because uh, uh, um, I actually ended up using that machine to help port Elite, uh, games like Zarch that came later. Um, how it, it, in comparison, where an, uh, I later got a PC, which would take three minutes to compile the, um, the virus code base, the Archimedes, it was a fraction of a second. You know, it was so much more powerful a machine, even than a newly released 68,000-based uh, machine like the Atari ST and the Commodore Amiga. But anyway, I was presented with this opportunity and, uh, and given a very small... They were planning to release the machine three months later, and they didn't yet have a working operating system or anything, so I had to write a game. And I actually hosted it off a of BBC Micro, so I was actually writing the code <laughs> on the, and then downloading it to, the, to a second processor. Does anyone remember the second processor? Okay, a few people. <laughs> this, it was a, a lump. If you look at the BBC Micro, you had another lump that went here, and you linked it with a ribbon cable from down here called the tube. So you ended up with a big, sort of very expensive pile of these big sort of cream lumps, and it added that you could buy a second 6502 processor, um, which a lot of people did. I mean, you'd think these days, why would you do that? You've probably got that processing power on your watch, but it did make a big difference. Because it gave you 64K of memory, which at that time seemed like a huge amount. Mm. But inside one of those boxes, they'd made a prototype for the arm, what's now the arm, which, by the way, just to show how important that was, it's now in, I suspect, more than 90% of mobile phones. It's the processor in the iPhone, the processor in the phone I've got, which is a Nokia. You know, there, there are a huge range of machines out there. Um, I think a typical PC like this laptop probably have half a dozen of them because it's in the disk controller. It's a fantastic processor. Anyway, that was one of the first processors, I believe, designed um, by people who were software experts rather than hardware experts. So they looked at how to make things go faster. So anyway, this opportunity came along. So in three months, I managed to, to write that game. And then Zarch was a commercial mm. game that was available for release of the machine. Mm. Because the Lander game was, went on the disk that, you, you, that was, bundled, was for free with the machine, it had to be ready a lot earlier, because all that package has to be ready. So that was writing to a schedule. So that was actually a rip-off game of a game I'd written on the Acorn Atom all those years ago called Meteors, which was a 2D sort of take on asteroids. So you see an asteroid bounce down, break in two except in 3D. Um, how many people out of interest that, that played Lander Strokes Arch died on the launch pad before they even went anywhere? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Most of the time, actually. So it's like, I kept forgetting. 